there he goes he's walking away each step that he takes brings heartache my way he's walking but he's walking in shoes that need a polishing so that's what i'm doing today i'm polishing my boots Here are my boots. I love these boots. I wear them uh, all over the city, all year round. And I don't mind that they get scuffed up and worn looking, but every now and then I'm going somewhere fancy and I need to really polish my boots. And that's what I'm doing today. To polish your shoes, you need shoe polish. And shoe polish comes in various forms. I am going to show you how I polish my boots using a shoe polish that has a turpentine base. So this method of polishing shoes is not applicable to every shoe paste or shoe polish. A lot of shoe polishes are alcohol based and that alcohol based shoe polish would not work for this technique. I lived in Germany and there's a very old shoemaker. I think it goes back to the 1500s. Das ist an der Brienenstraße in den München. Und es ist eine ganz alte Schuhmacher. Eine sehr berühmte Schuhmacher. Und das heißt für die Deutsche, es heißt Edward Meyer. Aber in Englisch, ich sage das nicht. Okay, so if you understood that, then... <laughs> but I'll t I tell you in English now, okay? Uh, there's a really, really wonderful old shoemaker in Munich. Um, no, I'm just going to say it. Edward Meyer. And Ed Meyer goes back, I think, to the 15 or 1600s. They still make shoes by hand. And guess what? When they deliver these very fancy handmade shoes, they deliver them in a horse-drawn carriage. Yes, magic still exists out there. So when I lived in Munich, I loved this place, and I, I the, the shoe polish came from that old world store. And this is a turpentine based shoe polish, which creates a, a very glossy finish for polishing shoes, but only with this stuff. So you can test out the shoe polish you have at home and see if it will do this. If it doesn't, it probably means that the shoe polish is alcohol based, not turpentine based. You smell, there's some, some, there's some strong stuff in there. I have two colors. I have a very dark brown and I have a reddish color. And I go back and forth with these boots because they're kind of in between. The leather's a little red, but it's also brown. When I want to give the shoes kind of a more formal feel, I use the darker shoe polish. Uh, sometimes I use a mix of both. So to do this, very simple. The shoes are cleaned first, so before you got here, I took a damp cloth, I wiped off the shoes, and I let them fully dry. And now, I'm actually gonna apply the polish to the boots. So, what I do is I open this up, and I do what they taught me to do, that I got the shoe polish. Put a little water in the lid. I'm putting some water in the lid of my shoe polish container. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a, an old toothbrush, pick up some of the polish, and I'm gonna apply the polish in the areas that the cloth really won't access. That's the area between the actual leather of the shoe and the sole of the shoe. Really, right here around the toe of the shoe, that's where it seems to get a lot of wear. And I take that brush and I really rub the polish in it makes a big difference when this part of the shoe is darkened again with the wax. And I go all around the whole perimeter of the sole. Really get that wax in there. Okay. 
You can see the difference. I'm gonna hold them side by side. This one has all the polish put into this crevice here and this one doesn't. Second step, I'm gonna take a nice lint-free rag. I always have a rag bag into which old articles of clothing go. And when I need to do, to do something like this, I go to the rag bag and I pull out an old t-shirt, an old pa panties, you know what I mean? And then I rip them up and I use them for stuff like this. It's great. You got a sock with a hole in it, don't throw it in the garbage, put it through the washing machine and then put it in the rag bag. And when, when you go to polish shoes, use the sock with the hole in it that you ripped apart, rip it apart, make it flat, use it for this and then throw it out. So I'm picking up some of the shoe polish and I'm going to rub all over the boot, okay? I like to make a little ritual of this. Like if I have somewhere that I'm going and it's gonna be a nice evening out on the town, I give myself half an hour to polish my shoes and it's a nice, nice form of just quietening down your mind before you're gonna go out into the city and have a nice night out. Don't be stingy with the polish. Put it on there because you're gonna rub any excess off afterwards, but there needs to be enough polish, especially if the leather is thirsty. If the leather looks dry, this is where it's gonna get some moisture. Don't forget the sides of the shoe. Often the sides of the shoe get neglected. The outside and the, in, the instep, or the, this part. Is it called the instep? I don't know. I think this is the instep. That looks good. All of the areas that were scuffed are now covered with the polish. You could see side by side. Now this is the method that I like to use with this kind of waxy shoe polish that has a turpentine base. I dip the rag in water and I rub the water onto the surface of the shoe, okay? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a barrier between the next layer of polish. And now with the same wet rag, I pick up more of this polish and I go over that, those areas where I placed the water. I learned this from this shoemaker in the shop when I bought the shoe polish. I had a little shoe polishing lesson. Auf Deutsch. Okay, now I'm gonna dip in the water again and go over this layer with water. And I can already see there's a sort of a depth and a patina developing on the leather. It's not an actual patina, it looks like a patina. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up another bit of polish and go over again. I do two or three coats like this. Oh, it's getting shiny. So what I'm doing here by using water and wax alternatively is I'm creating very thin layers of the wax that have water in between the layers. And for some reason, it helps to create a really nice, beautiful shine. Okay, that, that was the water. Using the same cloth that's now slightly damp, I'm just gonna turn it and I'm going to rub this and look at this I don't need much to be amused 
It's things like this. Every time I do them, I just am s just smiling like a child at the end of it. Got to put a little elbow grease into it, Heidi. At that point, the boot is still kind of damp, so I would wait about half an hour, and then I would do the next step. But before I do that, I just want to hold these up side by side. Look. Let's just say half an hour went by. We don't have all day here. I can't wait half an hour while you're sitting there waiting for me, so I'm just gonna do it now. I take my nice shoe brush and look at this beautiful, beautiful thing. This is a horse hair shoe brush. I do have another one that I use for clothing, for brushing off clothes, but this one is a shoe brush. This is the new version. So this is a brush that you could buy in shoe shops today. This is old, this is an antique. And I will say, let me just ask you, which one looks better? The new one or the old one? Look at, look at the cur beautiful curve at the top of this brush. Look at the wonderful, luscious, generous bristle surface area. I have this to show you because I do use it sometimes, but I'm gonna use this old brush. This brush, I think I got this for $8. You can find these things if you really look. That's what's wonderful about going to antique malls all over the United States. Go into these antique malls, look around, you never know what you're gonna find. Very often you'll find something that's cheap that you can buy and use. It's a beautiful, useful thing. I love my shoe brush. Shut up already. <laughs> you cover the brush, the horsehair brush, with the very thin, thin cloth or pantyhose if you have it. And sometimes this doesn't make it as shiny as I'd like. This is not something that takes an extreme amount of skill or precision. As long as you're using a color of shoe polish that's close to the color of the leather, you really can't go wrong. So just play around with it. Figure out what you need to do to achieve a shine. That looks really good. Time to do the other boot. Take that toothbrush and get in there. I want the top of the boot to really have a nice generous amount of wax because this really is the, this is the main show. That's the boot with the wax shoe polish put on it. Now, cloth into the water and put a layer of water. You can see when I put the water on, it is getting shinier. See, this one's darker because there's water still absorbed in the leather, and as it dries, it's lightening. Well, these just need to dry fully, but they're all polished, good as new, spick and span. Once I was visiting my old high school teacher, Mrs. Burke, in Toronto. I was going over for dinner, and I showed up. It was the winter. These boots, these very boots, had salt stains all over them. And I took my shoes off at the door, had a wonderful dinner with her and her partner, Dave. 
And at the end of the night, when I was ready to go home, I went to the door and my shoes were shiny and the salt stains had disappeared. And I, I it was floored. I thought I was so drunk that I had <laughs> forgotten showing up with my shoes polished. But I asked what happened and Dave said, oh, I was polishing my shoes and I, I saw yours, so I polished yours. And then I asked him what happened to the salt stains and he said, oh, I just put some white vinegar on them and they disappeared. And I think when I left Mrs. Berg's house, I was teary because the fact that someone took the time to polish my shoes at their house. I tell you, you can give me a present, you can go out there and buy something and send it over to me, but to actually stop and think about someone else, to think about them enough to take the time and do something for them that, that is kind, that to me is one of the greatest gifts of all. And very often when I polish my boots, I think of Dave and that small gesture that cold night in Toronto. How to polish your shoes, how I polish my shoes. This is not a sponsored video. We're paying for this ourselves, you and me. <laughs> this is how to do it. Thanks for watching.